Today we are going to discuss the elections in Venezuela and we have with us Professor Ejaz Ahmed, well-known commentator on international affairs. Welcome Ejaz. Thank you very much. This was said to have been one of the closest of the four elections uh, which Chavez contested and won. Reports have put his margin of victory at 54 to 46 or thereabouts but of course Numbers don't always tell uh, the story. Um, what do you think has been the uh, impact on the electorate? How has the election played out? And perhaps more importantly, what's the nature of the mandate that Hugo Chavez has received? Well, uh, the margin of victory is 11%, basically, uh, which is less than it has been. Uh, here is a leader who has been in power for 13 years, uh, and this is for another seven years. Uh, so the, the opposition was hoping that there would be a great fatigue factor. 11% is low only by Chavez's standards, not by world standards. Quite. Anywhere else, this would be considered a sweep, considering that the entire international media, that is to say Western media, had been saying that it is very close. Zelik, the head of the World Bank, has actually announced that uh, Chavez was going to lose. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a loser, he had said, and so on. So considering all that. But the deeper thing, uh, Raghu, is that the novel factor in the left um, uh, governments in Latin America, uh, that is to say certainly Venezuela, but also Bolivia and Ecuador, is that they have not touched private media. No. And all the media is owned by the oligarchs. That's right. Okay. Uh, in Venezuela now, there is an alternative media based on communities. But the big media of that kind, Secondly, there has been very low degree of expropriation of wealth. So the elections are always against wealth and against media. Thirdly, Andre Carpe, he's a 40-year-old young man who said, I am not responsible for what previous governments and pre parties which have been opposed to him has, have said or done in the past. We are starting a new. I will keep his pro social programs. I will just make them much more inclusive. Right. Okay. Now, I read this as Chavez having captured the hegemonic high ground, right. where for the first time the uh, the opposition instead of blasting him over this, that, and the other, is actually trying to posit itself as left of center, same programs, better tweaked, better organized, and so on and so forth. So there's a kind of a, of a, of a sort of con contestation of hegemony. Having said that, six million v Venezuelans voting against him, sure. against eight to nine voting for him, is a division. Uh, it is in that sense a fracture, but it's a fracture of a democratic order. And if it had been closer, like the Western media had been projecting, and if it had actually been as sharply polarized as was being projected, then the fears that were proclaimed by the Western media of violence erupting on the streets may have happened, but it has not. Right. Which yeah. means that there is a broad acceptance of the... Yes. Yes, and for the first time, for the first time in fact, again, I think this is part of Chavez's victory, moral victory, that the opposition conceded yeah. it without reservations. Right. Now, what you have there is Jimmy Carter, whose Carter Center has supervised, has observed 92 elections in the world, who's even uh, the Carter Center has got a Nobel Prize for doing so, uh, says unambiguously, that the electoral process in Venezuela is the best electoral process in the world. So 
this whole business of fraud oh, quite. that people have, they, they would have screamed fraud. Yes. But there were over 200 organizations observing the elections and so on and so forth. And you're absolutely right. The margin uh, being as narrow as it is, um, neither a question of, um, of trying to delegitimize the elections nor the question of violence could be posed. In terms of what the Chavez government is now having to do, uh, Venezuela is set to face many challenges on the economic uh, front, in terms of health care, uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, a rising crime graph. Uh, several commentators have spoken of the need for uh, Chavez and his team to recast uh, the mold of governance in Venezuela. Uh, what do you think of how this government is going to be run in the years to come? In all this, I think the real, the reality, uh, the, 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 the real stuff is, uh, is, is the crime rates, certainly, uh, and to a certain extent corruption. These are real issues. The Ministry of Justice has been one great failure, and the, the whole sort of uh, civil security situation in Venezuela has been a real failure. Infrastructure today in Venezuela is very deficient, but nothing compared to what it was in the past. Um, years and years, in fact, decades of oil incomes had meant that roughly 90% of the population lived in these dilapidated cities and the countryside was emptied and the infrastructure had collapsed. Rebuilding of that whole infrastructure and then building infrastructure for the kind of development that right. Venezuela needs to do and can do, has the resources to do, uh, is, a, is, is a challenge of a completely different order. Uh, but it is not that Venezuela is particularly deficient in uh, that there is some sort of a failure of the Chavez government. The, the Chavez uh, campaign, Chavez and his uh, party, uh, came up with a 43-page program, which is a wonderful document because it lays out in detail what the next stage of deepening of the revolutionary process is going to be. And it is markedly different from the last one, um, which is ending in 2000, and, uh, the, the one that began in 2006 and, and is ending now. Uh, <clears throat> they seem to have been working on this very, very uh, much. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very promising document. The problem, uh, Raghu, the most fundamental problem is that when Chavez came, came to power, there was no political force or a party organization and things of that sort. I have been to Venezuela. I have dealt with bureaucrats there. They are, were glacially immobile. You have brilliant people who are, Chavez, who are uh, you know, Chavez people, but to move that bureaucracy was just impossible. And this is what is taking a great deal of time, and you need a great deal of innovation in that. Uh, Chavez said after the elections that he is not going to compromise with neoliberalism, that he is going to embark on a series of steps to deepen uh, the Bolivarian revolution. Um, and you've touched on some of these uh, aspects. Uh, in what way do you see the years to come, unfolding a, an alternative vision uh, which is coming out of uh, Venezuela as an alternative to modern day capitalism. And to what extent do you see this influencing developments elsewhere in South America? Well, uh, the, the, the very last part, uh, I think, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, one, one can address very, very quickly. Uh, this whole sort of um, change in 
in Latin America, or at least part of Latin America, which includes two of the largest uh, countries, Brazil and Argentina, uh, and the wealthiest, which is Venezuela, um, has been led by Venezuela. Yes. Um, all the visionary um, things that have come in place, the idea of uh, Latin American integration, the idea of uh, having a, a, a independence in energy resources, financial institutions, this, that, and the other, all of it has come from Venezuela. And this is going to, 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 to uh, progress very, very rapidly now. And that is how it has been greeted. President Lula, uh, who is no longer president, but uh, uh, from Brazil, his statement was that it's not just a victory for the Venezuelan people, it's a victory for Latin American people, and it's a strike against imperialism. Now, for Lula to use the word imperialism yeah. is not a small matter, <laughs> you know. So, so, so it's, it's going to, be, to, to do all of that on the Latin American scale. It gives, <laughs> and again, uh, you know, uh, he's not the only one who keeps get, getting re-elected. Korea got re-elected. Kushner died, but his wife got el elected. Uh, Lula uh, yeah, went PT, through two yes. terms, and yeah. then his appointee virtually won the elections and so on, PT in Brazil and so on. So the left is actually uh, Morales. Consolidating. Morales. Yes, of course. Uh, so they are all getting re-elected. And they are getting re-elected on the basis of very precise kind of achievements and in the teeth of media barons inside the country and outside the country, in the teeth of all the wealth that is uh, accumulated wealth of the oligarchies. <clears throat> Um, now, this is a very interesting process where very, very extensive forms of democratization are coinciding with the creation of a basic social infrastructure for what he calls socialism of the 20th century, to which we can come back. Uh, a little later. Uh, <clears throat> so, now there are seven years. My sense is that the real problem in Venezuela is the problem of succession. Uh, what you have in Venezuela is that the infra, what I'm calling the infrastructure of the socialist revolution, the power structures at the base are being created at a very rapid rate and in astonishingly innovative ways, astonishingly innovative ways, uh, which is giving millions upon millions upon millions of people daily practical involvement in the building of the revolution, from which they benefit directly and immediately. Sure. So all of that is happening. And then you have at the top uh, Chavez and his advisors and so on. But what you don't have in Venezuela is a leadership structure uh, which, can which, can, which can carry this forward. And this becomes particularly important considering uh, the precariousness of uh, of Chavez's health. Now, I am sure that the wonders of Cuban medicine will uh, <laughs> keep him alive and well <laughs> and functioning as long as um, possible and hopefully through all the six or seven years of his next term. But th this question is, 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 is pressing. And just as there is innovation at the bottom, there, I believe, needs to be innovation at the top. Thank you very much, Ajaz, for that very insightful uh, look Thank at you. the situation in Venezuela. Thank you very much.